We are back again. So uh, many times today. Yeah, we're just in the mood, and we're sort of trapped here, so why not? Yep, so we got another... How to Van Good. Yes, with your host, Egale, and the me. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our topic today is the mulligan. Yes, the mulligan. As you can see here, we have a hand that we just shoveled up and drew before the mulligan. Now it has the, all the necessary uh, necessary elements. Your grade one, two, and three. And while that's good enough to keep based on that alone, maybe it's not quite good enough, and you want to change it for to better suit the situation. Let's say I'm taking the first turn. I'll get to grade three earlier than my opponent. These will do me more good. But at the same time, I want more grade twos to hit them. Yes. So I'm going to throw away these and keep my Apollon with the intent of riding him. And of course, since I threw back grade threes, anything I get back is probably going to be better than that in terms of early game application. Let's just see for sure. Plus, you know, if my first vanguard is Eclair here, I don't need to worry about getting that grade 3 quite as much. Just in case I didn't have one. Hi, everybody! Say hi to YouTube, everybody. <laughs> anyway, back to business. That poor guy. <laughs> he doesn't know what he happened to hey, him. What am I going to get? Awesome! Just what I was looking for and it hit them a little harder. Excellent, excellent. But, you know, maybe I was going second. Where did she go? If I was going second, that might change a few things. It means I get to make the first attack. I would typically want more grade ones for the job. In this situation, I would be a little more ballsy. I've got my eclair. I can get this grade three, most likely, if I don't have one anyway. From the time count. Giving more things to attack with. Of course, you always want to have that grade two, because without it, you're more or less yeah. You have time to get the big guys. So, let's see. Especially if you got the big lead early on. No. Okay, it didn't want me to have them. Drop turn? Eh. What can you do? Heck, you can even play this if you really want to play it. Such is life. Now there are other factors that you might consider in your mulligan. What your opponent is, what your opponent might be playing. I mean, if you know who they are, you probably have an idea. Yep. And then there are other minor things to consider. Do you want to keep the perfect card? I personally don't in the vast majority of cases. <laughs> well, no, shut up, Elliot. Some people like to. That's a personal decision, though. I'd prefer to have something that would put in a more offensive effort early in the game. You can call these, but calling them just is a tip to your opponent that you have one less and they can hit you a bit harder. But sometimes you're just left with that choice. You have to do it. Yep. Or if you're playing the likes of, say, Sukuyomi, you don't even necessarily need to have your grade one. Don't go too far out of your way for things you can just naturally search. Another good example would be the angel feathers. Ah, yes. yes. The angel feather mechanic of swapping cards in the damage zone with the cards in the hand gives you a little leeway. Yeah, a little leeway. A little leeway. What are words? I don't even know, man. 
Yeah, so you'd ever check that grade three. That's perfectly fine. You have your manly man standing here. And you can call your love machine guns. Swap. Yoink. Problem solved. Or if you're playing the likes of Royal Paladins and you've got that awesome, awesome pony all in your hand. You don't need to go out of your way for the grade three, especially if your hand is already set to go with a bunch of grade one and two units. You can search it. Just use the pony to get it. Or if you're really desperate in another kind of deck, use that Wingo Brave to try to get that MLB into your hand. Why does it always have to be about Paladins? <laughs> it always goes back to Paladins one way or another. And speaking sometimes of Paladins... Sometimes your hand will be bad. Sometimes you won't open with a grade one. But in speaking of Paladins, there's another way too. I believe his name is Criff. Yeah. Where you just need two specific cards, and just the rest doesn't matter. Just need two vanillas. Job done. Yep, two vanillas, grade three, and turn two. Sometimes, yes. Yeah, it always gets back to go Paladins. I figure it may as well, since we're on um, Paladins, right. talk about it. Uh, if you don't open with a grade one, some people get desperate and throw back their whole hand. But personal experience and math says no. that is not a good idea. Not at all. Above all else, you should be keeping your grade two. And if you had it at all, the grade three you want to ride, your basic three card mulligan is enough to get you what you need to get most of the time. And if you don't, well, that's just bad luck. There's not much else you could have done about it. Right. But don't go at all back, because yeah. if you do, these guys are gone, and you get, say... You know, maybe you get this hand back, and that ain't cool, bro. Yeah, because now you can't get to the grade three. You got your grade one, but now you have no two. And you're just going to end up having the same problem. If not, a little bit worse. Just switched around. Um, We're talking smacks, interval. Let's take a round and back. Bit to this whole discussion. Right on the tip of my tongue. Now I lost it. Of course. Always the case. I'm a terrible person. <laughs> I shouldn't be in these videos. <laughs> what was it? What was it relating to? Along the lines of that whole grade one deal, yeah. All right. Sometimes you can just play the odds. If you open a hand with, you know, say, this. Very cheery crowd back there. <laughs> okay then. <laughs> anyway, we are amazing. We have our own applause track. I know. It's great. Sometimes you can play the odds though. Let's <laughs> say you open a hand like this. It's kind of gross. And what? you know, mathematically speaking, you probably shouldn't do it. But grade ones make up the mass of your deck most times, and sometimes it's just gonna be your next draw. You never know. You can turn a terrible hand into, oh my god, why won't it stop? <laughs> yeah, sometimes Everyone has their own way of doing these things, but... Well, we can't stress it enough, try not to throw back the whole hand. It rarely works out. And just use a little bit of logic in the process. Any ride is better than no ride. And if you've got your ideal cards, but you're missing something on the bottom end, don't just throw them back. You're screwing your long-term game plan. That should just about cover the topic of how to properly mulligan well, on how to van good. Alright then.